Welcome to Network Marketing Pro. My name is Eric Worre and today, I wanna give you the fastest path I know to becoming a network marketing professional. Here's one thing I know about this community, the Network Marketing Pro community. Everybody would love to go full-time. Everybody would love to be able to enjoy the freedom that network marketing provides. Everyone would love to be able to move through the ranks, get to those levels so they can enjoy good things in life and also contribute to the lives of others. So how do you do that? The best way I know, the fastest way I know, is to improve the people that you're spending time with. What do I, what do I mean by that? One of the early lessons I got in my life, I, I, it started with my parents, and then it, and it continued with some of my mentors. My parents would always say, be careful who you become friends with because your friends have an influence on your life. And you've seen that if you're a parent, you know, you want your children to have good friends. Why is that? Because those friends will help guide them in a positive direction. Bad friends will help guide them in a negative direction. And when I got involved in network, mar in network marketing, Jim Rohn was one of my early mentors, and he talked about the power of association. That you, he gave me a formula. He said, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And if you think about that, that's true. You're gonna generally think how they think, go where they go, do what they do, read what they read, read if they read, eat what they eat, your language is gonna be similar, your interests are gonna be similar, your ambitions are gonna be similar, and it's very difficult to be the Lone Ranger inside of a negative influence and try to influence a larger group of people. That's what some people try and do. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change everybody around me. Well, when you dance with the devil, the devil doesn't change. The devil changes you. So negative influence changes you. So how does this apply to network marketing? Here's how it applies. If you're not focused, find a way to get around the most focused and productive people that you can possibly find. Make friends with those people. Don't hang out as much with people who are lazy, people who procrastinate, people who are filled with excuses, people who are blaming all the time. Those people are gonna cause you to procrastinate and blame and give excuses and complain. Now, if you get around positive people like that, and the great thing about network marketing is, is we have a, a large pool of people to choose from. People in our company, people in our upline, people in our downline that we can choose from in order to be able to get around and learn from, okay? So if that's in just a general area. If get around people who are learning, get around people who are growing, get around people who are always striving to be better. If you don't know, for example, uh, how to recruit very well, or you're insecure in recruiting, the fastest way I know for you to become a good recruiter, it's not in the study. Study, there's a, a, how many videos have I done on how to recruit? Yes, the information's important. However, the environment is many times more important than the information. So find people who are great recruiters and listen to those people, spend time with those people. Uh, if, if you're not good at doing presentations, find a way to develop relationships and friendships with people who are doing great presentations. If you can't get people to attend your company events, find people who are great at getting people to attend your company events and find a way to friend those people up and listen to what they do and watch what they do. See, I, I found in, in this type of association that if I listened, number one, that was really, really valuable. If I took notes and I observed what they did, that was all, many times more valuable. In other words, my modeling of their behavior, I watched what they did, I watched what they said, I watched how they handled certain situations, I listened, I took notes, and then I tried to emulate that. Now. It works in every category of building your network marketing business. If you lack confidence, find a way to get around confident people. If you lack uh, focus, find a way to get around focused people. If you lack recruiting skills, find a way to get around people who are great recruiters. If you lack some of the social skills, find some people who are incredible at social skills. 
If you lack leadership, if you're not having duplication in your organization, find people in your organization, I promise they exist, that are great at getting people to duplicate. Now, here's the thing. It's a little tricky at the beginning because sometimes the people who are really good at those things, they're very busy, and you can't just come in as a needy person and come into their group and just barge your way in. You have to earn your way in. See, if you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with, where do you want to be on that list of five? Do you want to be at the top, the best of the five, or do you want to be the worst of the five? Many people say, well, I want to be the best. Well, that's, that, that will feed your ego and it'll steal from your future because here's where you want to be. You want to be at the lowest level of the five because those people that are more successful, and however you want to define it, than you are, will pull you up. And if you're at the top of the five, those people at, below you will pull you down. So successful people understand that if you come in at the bottom rung of their circle of influence, it's likely that you may distract them. You may pull them down a bit. So you have to earn it. So how did I earn it at the very beginning? I had 18 jobs by the time I was 22 years old. I was a struggling person in network marketing. I've been where you've been. I understand the challenges of network marketing. So what do you do? How do you get around? Now the great thing is if you have an upline, and all of you do, you can search into the upline. And guess what the upline's uh, hoping for and waiting for and praying for? Somebody in their group that's hungry, that reaches out to them. Somebody who's hungry and is willing to work to get into the group. So here's what I did when I started. I found a mentor in Minneapolis. He was incredible. His name was Michael Nelson. And I found a way to spend more time with him. And here's how I did it. At the local meetings that he was running the local meetings, I'd be the first person to show up and I'd help him set up the room. I'd be the last person to leave. I'd help him break the room down. I'd pick up his, his briefcase or whatever, his computer bag, and I would carry it to his car for him, literally. I would be a servant to someone who was more successful than me so I could earn some time. And because of that, there was a time you'd be able to have a, have a, uh, you know, a, a, a Coke or something after the, the event and I could sit there, I could ask some questions. And he could see that I was hungry, he could see that I was ambitious, and this person was not even in my upline. So, but he saw something in me that I was willing to learn and I was willing to give. I was willing to be a servant. And because of that, not just a servant that would just sit there and say, I'm not worthy, but a servant that was willing to serve the community in order to gain access and learn and grow. Now, at the very beginning, again, well, first thing was my, my local market. Second thing is I went upline. And my immediate upline wasn't much help. And many times in network marketing isn't much help, but I kept going. I found a person that was something like 18 levels above me that was the most successful person in the company. And I didn't demand his time because there was no way. He didn't even earn anything, really. I was so deep in the organization, he, it, I, I, don't, I don't believe he ever earned a penny in commissions from the activity that I produced. But again, I was hungry and I was willing to invest. I was willing to make it easy on him. I didn't call him at home and say, you know, tell me everything that you know because you're my upline. You owe me something. I didn't do that. What I did was I found ways to be around him. He was doing a training in Detroit. I'll never forget. Uh, I, I called him and I said, you know, where, where are you doing some meetings? He was getting a group started in Detroit, Michigan. I lived in Minnesota at the time. I got in the car and I drove. I said, can I just come shadow you and just sit in your meetings and hang out? I drove 12 hours to Detroit, Michigan. I had no money. And I, I, I went to the hotel he was staying at. I didn't have the money to book a room at the hotel. So I slept in my car every day. He didn't know, and I didn't tell him. I would come in in the morning early and I would get freshened up in the lobby bathroom. And I would sit with the little free cup of coffee in the, lo in the lounge and I would wait for him to come down after he had his nice night's sleep. He'd come down and, and we'd chat for a little bit and off we would go to you know, presentation after presentation. And again, I didn't bother. I observed, I watched, I listened, I carried his bags. 
I, and then between those meetings or afterwards, after we were having dinner, I, I could kind of hang out in the fringe and I could listen, I could ask a question here or there. And I gained some insights during that trip that were incredible. And I, I started doing that on a regular basis. I started seeking out knowledge from people who are more successful, influential, powerful, skillful than I was. So one was in my local market, I served and I gained access. Second was in my upline. I served and I gained access. I went to the home office. I, I drove to the home office. Back then it was in Memphis, Tennessee uh, from Minneapolis. Again, it was, I don't know, 14 hour drive. I drove there just to meet the people at the home office, to take a home office tour and to meet the influential people so they knew my name. Why did I do that? So my name would start being talked about here and there. Hey, this young kid, he came down to the home office and he's, he's a sharp kid. And if that name came up around an influential person, maybe I could gain some access because of that. That helped me tremendously. So my company, my local market, and my upline. Now, in addition to this, it's, it, you know, some people say take a millionaire to lunch. It's difficult to take a millionaire to lunch because they're busy and they're protective of their circle of influence because they understand that you're gonna bring their average down. So here's what I did. I drove this nasty, ridiculous AMC Spirit car. If you ever wanna Google a car, it's the most miserable car in the history of cars. It had a gas leak, the window didn't go all the way down and it would, it would rotate gas through the windows, you know, constantly. It was miserable looking and it, you know, the muffler was half off and all this kind of stuff. So every time I went to meet with anyone, I, I parked around the corner and I walked. I didn't want them to see my car. But, so with all of this challenge, how do I get, get influence? You know what, what, what really helped me? Um, programs like this. Back then it was audio cassette. We didn't have the internet and we didn't have video. We didn't have uh, learning systems like this and it certainly wasn't free. What I, ha what, what I got my hands on was audio cassettes from people like Jim Rohn and Brian Tracy and Les Brown and Dennis Waitley and Og Mandino and these giants of personal development. And they became one of my five. By just being in my car, listening over and over and over, they became one of my five. And what happened when, when, when I, I started to listen over and over and over, I could start to use the language that they used in conversation with other people. I could bring value to a conversation of people more successful than me that maybe didn't hear what I heard from that program. There was one speaker that I, that I really admired, one, one of the top leaders in the company, I really admired. I wanted to work with him so bad. And I, I found a way to connect with this person and um, he was very successful and I was just a, a fledgling person. And I would start to give him ideas. I would say, hey, I read this book. You should, I, I, I remember I, I recommended to him, there's a book called Unlimited Wealth by Paul Zane Pilzer, and it talked about distribution was going to be the future of the world. It wasn't going to be manufacturing anymore, it was going to be distribution. Distribution of goods and distribution of information. So I started pulling quotes and I would send him quotes, hey, you maybe use this in your next presentation, use this in your next training. And he, was, he, he used it and people loved it and they were, oh, oh my gosh, this is great. Send me more if you got any more, kid, right? And I, and I hosted a training event in Minneapolis and I, I had some of the top leaders come in. He was one of the leaders and, and I sat down afterwards and said, what can I do to spend more time and, and work with you? And uh, he said, well, I don't know, you know, I'm busy, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but I do appreciate this, you sent me this, you sent me that. And he went home and I sent him a, a card afterwards and said, you know, hey, thank you for the time, I really appreciate it. And if I can do anything, one of my goals is to work with you. Uh, some way, somehow. He was cross-lined, he wasn't in my organization, but just work together. Why did I want to work together? I, why did I want to serve that relationship as a young man? Because I understood that if I got around people who were committed to excellence, that excellence was gonna start to rub off on me, okay? So, my car being a drive-time university, I'll never forget. I put Jim Rohn in my car and I wore it out. Les Brown, Brian Tracy, Dennis Waitley, Og Mandino, greatest salesman in the world, all these different people, Earl Nightingale, uh, Napoleon Hill, everything. I was reading books, I was, I was studying, I was learning, I was growing, and I was listening all the time. And I would imagine that, that uh, uh, Jim Rohn and 
And Brian Tracy and Og Mandino were sitting in the back seat of my car and they were just having a conversation. I got to listen in. And that was incredible value for me. So I'll never forget, six years after I started doing that, I'm about uh, 30 years old, and I'm in, a, in my car, which is a nice car now, a decent car, in Dallas, Texas, and in the back seat of my car were Jim Rohn, Brian Tracy, and Og Mandino, for real. And they're sitting in the back seat of my car having a conversation. I'm just driving them to their hotel. But they're having a conversation. I'm going, oh my gosh, I attracted this. I set this thing in motion, and guess what? Now I get to hang around with legends. I get to learn from incredibly wise, unbelievable people. So today, I still, I'm still engaged in this. Why do you think I seek out and interview people like Brian, uh, well, Brian Tracy, of course, but like Tony Robbins? I'll be inter interviewing Sir Richard Branson on June 3rd. I mean, come on the opportunity to spend time with these people. And why will they do it? Because I'm a servant to them. Because I want to help their mission in life. Because I want to, to uh, be of, of value, of service in, in, in some way in their world. And you know what? I found I can earn my way into any group. And so can you. You can earn your way into a group of unbelievable recruiters, a group of unbelievably productive people of unbelievably successful, moving through the ranks, changing people's lives, ambassadors for the network marketing profession. You can earn your way into that group. Or you can earn your way into a much more negative group. And you know, the bad associations in your life happen automatically. They're like weeds in a garden. They happen automatically. The good ones don't happen automatically. Those only happen by effort and work and focus and determination. The weeds happen automatically. That negative person that's always whispering in your ear, and you know who I'm talking about, the ones that's saying, well, that's always blaming, that's always trying to give you justification for not working, that's always trying to distract you, that's always trying to just chip away at your self-confidence. You know that person. That person needs to be on the very furthest fringe of your life, unless you want to sacrifice your life to keep them happy. See, here's the thing. If you continue to grow, you'll earn your way into different crowds. Some people will grow with you and some people won't. The fact that you grow and they don't doesn't mean you left them behind. It means that they stayed. And you decided that your contribution to the world was more important than making somebody else feel happy and appeasing somebody's negative influence. You cannot afford to be around people who are constantly distracting you from your purpose. You cannot do it. You have to focus on surrounding yourself with greatness, surrounding yourself with positivity, surrounding yourself with learners, surrounding yourself with people who are growing, surrounding yourself with people who are constantly reminding you, hey, you've got greatness inside of you. What are you doing? What are you doing? People who will, will grab you by the, by the shirt and say, stop. Stop playing small. Why are you playing so small? Why do we do our big events our GoPro Recruiting Mastery event. We're going to have 20,000 people at GoPro Recruiting Mastery at the end of this year. Why? What, one of the biggest values of that event outside of the training is the vision. People come in there and go, they go, oh my gosh. They see a bigger picture and that's what associations can do for you. You can see a bigger picture. But this is a choice. And it starts by, one, limiting your association with some negative people. In other words, don't spend as much time. Some of them you don't have a choice with, I understand but spend a little less time, be a little bit more busy in positive directions. Some, you're gonna to have to cut the cord. You're gonna to have to disassociate, at least until you gather enough strength to be a positive influence with them. You're gonna to have to, for the sake of your own future, your own purpose, your own contribution in this world, you're gonna to have to make some hard decisions. You're gonna to have to disassociate with some. But mostly, what I want you to focus on is expanding your association, being so busy and so surrounded by greatness that all those other petty little small thinking ideas don't even find their way into your mind because you have filled it with incredible influence. So I hope this gives you some value. I mean, I, I think this, is, this lesson is valuable for you. It's, a le it's valuable for your children. It's valuable for anyone who wants to do something great in the world. Uh, you have a choice. The fastest way to go to the top, in my opinion, is to surround yourself with people 
who are in that process. Surround yourself with people who are doing today what you want to do eventually. Earn your way into that group. Maybe it starts. The, the, the one thing that I need you to understand is many of my mentors I never met. Many of my greatest mentors I never met. They were a mentor on audio. They were a mentor on video. They were a mentor on, in books. I never met them, and they were still one of my five. Do you understand? And then eventually I became powerful enough that I met many of them, and you can too. So that's our show for today. Hope you really radically take a look at your life, prune and, and pull the weeds of negativity out of your associations and replace them with incredible value because you are worth it. That's our show for today. Ladies and gentlemen, my wish for all of you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You decide to go pro. You decide to surround yourself with greatness because it is a stone cold fact that we have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.